Hey guys, how are you? It's me, another movie review for guys, and uh, this movie we're reviewing is another movie that I could not wait to see, uh, mainly because it has been getting a lot of Oscar nods and things like that. I'm hearing that definitely is going to get Oscar potential, and most likely, just from what I heard about it, I'm like, this movie's probably going to crack my top 10 list. Now, it's been in theaters for a while, it has. Back when I saw Spotlight, this movie was also in theaters. I could have seen it at any point. I, I just really haven't had the money. I haven't had the money. I'm trying to save money, and I just said to myself, is this really a movie I need to see in theaters? Not really. Spotlights wasn't either, but I wanted to see that regardless. So, finally I've seen the movie, and that movie is Brooklyn. Brooklyn is a movie I could not wait to see. It was a movie that I have heard so many great things about. If you guys look back at my November movie preview, it was one of my most anticipated movies for November. And luckily, this movie finally came on to Solar Movie after having to wait and basically think I'm going to have to see it in theaters, but luckily I didn't. It did come on to Solar Movie, and I'm very happy it did because Brooklyn is one of the true masterpieces of 2015. I absolutely love this movie. It really is a fantastic film and definitely deserves all of the... Um, you know, nods it's been getting, possibly, it might possibly get, definitely does deserve that. Now, the plot to Brooklyn is fairly simple, and that's something I really like about this movie, is that's a very simple plot with a very big idea, and we'll get into that. Basically, our main character here, um, is played by, um, Cerise Ronan, Alice Lacey. She basically is from Ireland, and this takes place in 1952, when many, um, where many uh, women in Ireland were leaving Ireland to just go to a better place because the USA is just better. She's heard better things about it. She wants to leave Ireland and go to the USA just because she's heard many th things about it. It's just a better place, and she just feels it's going to be better for her to go there. You know, her sister has arranged her to go there, and she really doesn't want to go at first. She doesn't. Um, she doesn't want to go, but she goes, and uh, she has a hard time dealing with, um, you know, the change. But eventually, she runs into this guy, Tony, who really makes her look at things differently, and that's really all I'm going to say, because I don't want to ruin the movie for you. And this movie is just amazing. It really is amazing. It is an incredible film, and there are so many things... I love about this movie. Definitely, there are a lot of things to love about it. Mainly, the acting is really the thing that makes this film so great. I mean, a film like this might not have worked if the acting might not have been as strong. I mean, this is a movie that is dialogue-driven. There is no action in this movie. This is a dialogue-heavy movie, and that's really what works so well um, from these actors who... By far, give some of the best performances of the year, especially, without a doubt, the thing that carries this film, without a doubt, and the thing that, you know, I will remember most about this movie is, um, Cerise Ronan as A-list Lacey. She just anchors this entire film so well, and plays this character to perfection. The thing I like about A-list Lacey is that she's not a real person. This is not a real person that they're basing it off of, you know, it's based off of maybe someone that was real, but she pretty much is the ideal Irish immigrant, and you understand what she's going through. I mean, imagine if you have lived in this place for all your life, and, you know, you're used to the, the the culture, you're used to the language, you're used to the way things are in the town, you have a family there for you, you have a steady job, and then all of a sudden you're told you're just, you're gonna leave, and that, you know, um, you're gonna have to leave, and you're gonna have to go to an all-new country where no one really knows where you're doing because your culture was just different, or you've done something different, and there are just things you don't understand you really feel that change for her. You feel that, you know, she gets a lot of separation and anxiety in this movie, and they didn't portray it in a cheesy way. They really portrayed it in this way where she just doesn't really understand a lot of what's going on. And one of the most interesting parts of the movie is her getting to learn Brooklyn, just getting to learn the city in general, getting to learn how city life is much different than small town in Ireland, because that's where she lives. She lives in this very small town, and then in Brooklyn, it's obviously much more open, and I definitely really love that. She really just a great job. She has some incredible emotional moments in this movie, and a very, very good closing monologue especially. I mean, that's really one of the things that resonated with me very well in this film. I really loved her emotion in this film. She was also very funny at points. I mean, just seeing her, not really knowing what to do, I thought it was pretty, was really humorous at times, definitely. Now, it wasn't funny in the sense that, you know, they made it, you know, like we 
are supposed to ridicule her for what she's doing. It's just funny in the sense of the things that she's doing isn't exactly the right way, and a lot of those scenes are quite funny. I think she definitely did a very good job with that. Um, Emery Cohen, I thought, was also really good as Tony. He was really good. I really thought he gave a very good performance here. Was he as amazing as Cerise Ronan? No, but he didn't really need to be because his character in general is just aware of the city. There are many things he loves about the city, especially baseball. He is a huge baseball fan, and meeting A-list, I mean, these just, these two strike up a connection right away, and the chemistry they have is some of the best chemistry I've seen of any movie this year. They have such genuine chemistry, and I'd honestly like to see them do another movie together, because they really did a great job in this one. I love the love that they had for each other, and like I said, he really starts to make her look at things differently, you know, he starts to make this a much more positive experience for her, as, and when a certain point comes up in the film towards the third act, that's when things get really interesting, and he really, you know, the city is really the main conflict in this film, we'll get into how, and I really think he was a really great character. Uh, Domo Gleason was really great in this movie, two movies I've seen today with Domo Gleason, this, this guy's definitely doing a lot. Uh, I really like the character of Jim Broadbant's Father Flood, um, this religious figure that A-List is close to. I really liked his character. Um, Brid Brennan as Miss Kelly is great. She is the boss of um, A-List, and the main thing with her character is one very pivotal scene that comes towards the end of the film that I think really summed up a lot of the movie very, very well and really showed the transformation that she goes through. I also loved all of the girls that Alice is with in this college. She basically is in this college. She's getting an education, which is not really something they had in Ireland, and she is in college, basically. And her interaction with these girls are great. One of them being Felicity herself, Emily Betts um, Richards, which who I did not know was in this, and I thought it was great that she was in this. She was very funny. And just seeing these girls who are very aware of what they're doing and teaching her how to be more of a proper lady and show her how to do those sort of things, I definitely really liked. There are a lot of My Fair Lady-esque kind of scenarios thrown in there, but they do it in the sense where it's not trying to be like other films. You know, this is much different, and I definitely like the way it was handled, and it was funny, but not too funny, and I definitely like the way they did that. Also, Julie Waters is great as uh, basically the headmaster of this college. She was very good in the film, and I definitely really liked her character. So overall, all the acting, for the most part, was great. I really thought they did a great job. Um, my biggest thing here, though, besides, you know, what well, we'll get into the screenplay in a second, but the directing here I thought was very, very well realized, definitely. I mean, the directing the tone is spot on. When the movie needs to be dark, it's dark. When the movie needs to be funny, it's funny. I thought the tone was very well executed, and they did a good job with not making this a romance. While the movie does have a romance in there, it's not really about that romance. It's very much like Carol. There's a romance in that movie. The movie's not about that romance, though. What the movie is about is her adjusting to the city, and a large portion of it does focus on her and Tony, but that's mainly because of how much Tony just changes the world for her in general, and I definitely really love it, I thought the directing was really great here. However, my the one thing about this movie that definitely needs to get, without a doubt, is best screenplay. This is probably one of the best screenplays I have heard all year, because like I said, there's not a single bit of action in this movie. There's not a single bit of, you know, huge... Um, violent scene or anything. There's none of that in this movie. It's all direct dialogue, and it's just so compelling. The dialogue they had in there was so great, especially the setup with her immigrating. I mean, some of the things she has to go through. She gets on this train. They treat her like shit. There's literally a scene very early in the film where she has to use a bucket for a toilet because they won't actually let them use the toilet and don't treat them like regular people. It's really crazy to see how they were treated, but this did actually happen. They were treated that way, and they weren't seen as normal people. They were seen as immigrants. They were seen as outsiders. They were just... There's a reason we call them aliens, okay? That's how they treated them, and I really... It's very hard to watch, and I definitely like the way that was done in the film, and I thought they really handled that very, very well. And the movie definitely did a good job of not getting too sappy. I definitely really like the way that was done... But one of my biggest things with Brooklyn is the real message of this movie, what the movie's really trying to say. The movie really deals with the idea of home. What is home? You know, is home where you live, or is home just where you feel content with yourself? And for Alice, you know, she really starts to realize what home really is, and I think that really sums up this movie very, very well. You know, you could be, you know, you could physically live somewhere, 
that might not be your actually your actual home though you know where is it that you feel happy where is it that you feel like everything's just perfect in the world and there's not nothing to worry about nothing to stress over where is that this movie really goes into that very very well and i think they really portrayed all of that in a very interesting way that i didn't really expect going into and i definitely really love the way the movie handled that uh the romance between these two is very well developed i really like the way that that was done and you really got a sense of who these two characters were, definitely. And there are a lot of great twists uh, thrown into this movie that I definitely really love. The third half especially got very emotional. I mean, very emotional. The first two acts of the film are actually quite lighthearted. I was surprised with how not, uh, you know, it gets deep. It definitely does get deep. But it definitely was more of a fun, you know, it stayed fun. The third half is really when it got very heavy. And I definitely really liked the way that that was done. I thought it was a very... Um, great, you know, way, great change of pace. I definitely really like the way that that was done. Um, some of the best scenes in this movie, though, are her writing letters to her sister Rose on how the, the way she's communicating with her family. I mean, you have to remember, her family's on the other side of the world, pretty much. You know, they're on this just completely different side. And I loved, you know, all these scenes with her just writing these letters, knowing that's the only way she can stay in contact with her family. I mean... It's really sad to think about. It really is. You're just you're away from your loved ones, and it's really sad, and especially in a tragedy that occurs later in the film. Probably one of the most heartbreaking moments I've seen all year. Really, really realistically handled and definitely very well done. But in general, definitely Nick Hornby needs to be nominated for Best Screenplay because the dialogue is extremely compelling. I really loved it, and I really thought they kept it very, very interesting. And also, they really did a good job with, like, the culture of Brooklyn. Why is Brooklyn the way it is, you know, such a big city? What makes it different from a countryside? And they did a good job with comparing those two. You know, there's just a lot of things that A-List is not used to, and I like the way that that was done. And I really thought they handled all that very, very well. Uh, the cinematography here is gorgeous. The shots of the city... I'm pretty sure they shot on real location, which was very impressive if they did. And these just lawn shots are beautiful to watch. This is a movie that is just, it's gorgeous to watch. It is beautiful design. You really feel like you're in that time period of the 50s, I have to say. And they really did all that very, very well. And I really appreciated uh, the way the cinematography looked. Really, it looked gorgeous. The score was also great to this movie. I really did love the score. It worked very well. And uh, the editing. The movie was very well edited, definitely. I have really no problems with the movie in terms of editing. I did have one flaw, but then I realized, you know what? It was a big part of the movie. It really didn't matter because I was into it for the whole time, and I really loved the way, um, I really loved the editing of this film. I really thought it was very well handled. I definitely really appreciate that. And now I want to talk more about um, probably some scenes that really impact, really had an impact on me in this movie. So if you guys have not seen Brooklyn, I really don't want you guys to watch the rest of this review because I want to talk about my favorite parts of the movie. Um, because this movie contains was by far one of my favorite scenes um, out of any movie this year. And I'll get to that scene. But let me tell you guys what really what I really loved about this movie. Okay, I really loved the first two halves of this film. The first two halves, I was going to give it like a 4.5 out of 5 and say, oh, it does have an issue. But then the third half came around. I'm like, you know what? This is turning out to be a lot better than it already was. I think the third half is probably the best. The third, the last act of the movie is my favorite part of the movie because that's when things just change so much for Alys. A complete 180 on the character, especially once Tony says, you know, once she finds out that there is a way for her to get out of Brooklyn, that there's a way for her to get out, and she doesn't necessarily feel happy. She doesn't feel like she wants to get back to Brooklyn because, you know, she doesn't feel like she wants to get out of Brooklyn because she's so wrapped up in the way it is. You know, now she's kind of gotten used to how it is and gotten used to the people there, and they really handled all that very, very well. But then Tony asks her to marry him, and you really don't know what she's going to do, if she's going to go through with it. And that was also very well handled, because in that time period, I mean, imagine you're just away from a loved one. You can't just be engaged. They'll find someone else. This was a very smart way of him, you know, just marrying her before she went off. That's how much he loved her. He loved her that much that he needs to marry her, and I definitely loved uh, the way they handled all that scene. However, my favorite scene in this movie... Um, actually comes when she goes back to Ireland, um, when, you know, when she goes back there, 
And uh, I, I like that, uh, you know, I, I like seeing everyone just trying to keep her from going to Brooklyn because that's initially what she wanted. She didn't want to go back to Brooklyn. And nothing's changed. That's the thing I love about all these scenes is that nothing has changed for her at all except A-list herself. She is not the same person that she was when she went to Brooklyn. Now she's a completely different person. And the scene with Miss Kelly really sums it up very, very well. The scene where she's telling her this story about this girl, um, you know, that she knew about that went to Brooklyn, it just makes Ailish remember there are no secrets here. There's nothing she can do. You know, they know that she is married. They know what she is going to do. There's nothing that she can hide from them because it's such a small town and everyone knows everything. But then you go to a city side where there are just uh, thousands of people literally everywhere. And uh, that's just different for her. That's what she's used to. And I love that she does this one last act of just telling her mother about the marriage and that she's going to leave for Brooklyn because that's where she's happy. And the scene where she talks to that girl at the end of the movie it very much reminiscent of how that woman talked to her in the beginning of the film when she told her this is how Brooklyn is this is the conditions you need to expect but what I really loved is what she really said about home that that's you know she wants to go back to Brooklyn because that's where she feels safe that's where she feels like that's what matters to her Brooklyn is where she feels most content with herself Brooklyn is just what she's used to and even though she wasn't born there, she's just, that's who she is now. She's a city girl. She's no longer a country girl. She's found so much to love about it that going anywhere else is weird for her. And she doesn't really understand why she should go back to Ireland because she wants to be with Tony. She loves Tony. Tony loves her. There's no reason to not go back. And I definitely really love that about the film. I really think that ending was so powerful. Probably, honestly, maybe my favorite ending of the year, honestly. I think it was a really powerful ending. I really loved it. And uh, just one of the best endings of the year by far. Just really summed up the movie very, very well. Now, this movie is based off a book. I forgot to say that. But just overall, a fantastic last act of a really stellar film that is a, definitely a true masterpiece. So overall, guys, I would definitely recommend Brooklyn. It is one of the best films of the year, without a doubt. It really deserves a lot of the... Um, things I've been hearing about it. I mean, this movie had 100% on Rotten Tomatoes, and I really didn't know anything going into it except for, you know, the most basic of plot, and I like that I didn't know a lot because it really is a film that I think you should just go into not really expecting much, and you really will be very surprised at what this film has to offer because it really has a lot to say about a lot of things, and that's something I really did love about it. And overall, guys, I am definitely giving Brooklyn a 5 out of 5 or an A+. It is an amazing movie. I definitely recommend you guys check it out. You won't be disappointed, and it will probably surprise you. You'll probably expect this movie to be a cliched romance when it's really a much more thoughtful tale about home and how home is and things like that. And that really is something that I recommend that you guys check out. Um, but overall, guys, in my review, Brooklyn, hope you guys enjoyed that much, guys. So, some of you have seen. I will see you guys in my next video, which will be for another review. And I will see you guys for that. And uh, I will, yeah, I will see you guys for that. Okay, bye.